And hello again, welcome back to Playframe and to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and our room in Calm, which we can't get much of a look at yet, but I suspect we'll get to explore soon. Tifa has been very patient waiting outside the room for Cloud to answer the door for 24 hours in Earth time. So let's go and uh, see how she's doing. Sorry, did I wake you? Nope. What's going on? Oh, uh, it's nothing, really. There's just something I need to ask you. So, can we talk? Sure. Great, but not here. Follow me. Okay. That was weird. Tifa! Who's jamming at this hour? Guys, people are sleeping. It seems very pretty out here. I'm excited to see it in daylight. And have a word with the neighboring jazz club. Okay, yeah, this is very pretty. Wow. Gorgeous. Good looking town. Do you think Midgar's over there? Anyway. There's something I need to ask you, too. <laughs> Shoot. That night, five years ago, at the reactor, I saw you lying there. Saw your wound and all the blood. I figured it was too late. Yeah? <sighs> Wait, what are you implying? That I died? That I'm some kind of imposter? <sighs> Can't believe I'm having this conversation with you, but here we are. Here, look. My scar, that proof enough? After you left, Zongon found me. He's the one who brought me to the clinic. He risked his life carrying me out of the reactor and down the river. Wasn't just him though. There's the doctor who operated on me all night and the nurses who looked after me for days on end. I'm here now because they were there for me then. And where were you again? In fact, where have you been this whole time? For five years. You know I can't tell you that. Of course you can't. Sorry, I just need some space. And yeah, as long as they're going to have Tifa go ahead and raise this point using it as kind of like a a thing to bring a little bit more tension between she and Cloud and the fact that each of them remembers things pretty differently know, it seems like they're taking a good advantage of an opportunity they're creating Especially for a story that is going to take a lot more hours to get through, where the characters have a lot more time together to interact. <laughs> uh. 
I thought we could just pick up where we left off, like nothing had changed. But I guess I was wrong. Guess so. I was so happy to see you again, but maybe I shouldn't have been. I wonder. Well, yes, best to leave them alone for now, I agree. It's just, you gave me the prompt. Think I'm gonna give up an opportunity for Cloud to make a fool of himself? Never. You two fight. No. We have enough problems as it is. Copy? night tomorrow is another day chapter two a new journey begins Aerith really thinking ahead, being the only one who thought to pack pajamas. Darn nice room, though. Glad we didn't burn it down, Red. What's this? A gift from our humble establishment. Though it may not look like much, it should help you to break the ice with those you meet. Queen's blood? You can now play the card game, Queen's Blood. Find other players, denoted by that icon over there, around the world, and challenge them to matches. Should you win, you will often uh, they will often give you new cards to add to your collection. Defeating players will also give you the opportunity to fight other opponents in different towns. You can also build and edit decks by collecting or selecting card decks from the main menu. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I guess, sure, let's go ahead and get started on the actual gameplay of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Let's play some cards. <laughs> Each player takes turns placing a card on the board in one of the three lanes that span from left to right. First, try placing a card on one of the highlighted tiles adorned with an emerald pawn. Okay. Gargantuar. We'll go... I don't know. Here. Once a card is placed, its power is added to your lane total. New positions will also be added to the board, which are tiles with emerald pawns upon which you can place cards. The yellow number in the top right corner of a card is its power, while the positions a card will add to the board are indicated by the yellow squares in the graphic at the bottom. Okay. Following you so far. Next, place a card so that one of its yellow tiles overlaps with one of your existing positions. Okay, all right. Um. Very well. This one. And, yeah, there we go. When one of your card's position tiles overlaps with a position you control, the position rises in rank. As there are two pawns on that tile now, that position is rank two. Cards can only be placed on positions equal to or higher than their rank, which is denoted by the number of pawns in the top left corner of the card. Thus, in order to play more powerful cards, you'll have to raise the rank of your positions. I see. Interesting. Okay. I love that they've added a proper card game. Like, 7 didn't have a card game, but 8 did and 9 did, so it was something that... <laughs> Final Fantasy as a franchise was way into in the PS1 era, so they're making up for lost time by giving 7-1 retroactively. As you now have a rank 2 position, try placing your rank 2 card on it. That being the Riot Trooper here. 
Kaboom. When one of your cards positions overlaps with one of your opponents, you claim that position as yours. Note, however, that claiming a position will not raise its rank. Okay. You can keep track of who's winning a lane by looking at the point totals on each side of the board. The numbers on the left represent your power, the ones on the right represent your opponents. You may notice some cards have tiles with red borders. These are the tiles that are affected by the card's ability. Place cards effectively to make the most of their abilities and amass more power in more lanes than your opponent. In the event you cannot place a card, you can pass with triangle. When both players pass consecutively, the game ends. Okay. And now we are just able to play ourselves now. So, okay. Uh, what if I were to raise the power of allied cards on affected tiles by one by two while this card's in play? Okay. Cool. I want to do... Let's do this one. I'm curious to see that effect in action. And now we could... We could place this in the dead center. Bump up our Riot Trooper even more. Claim the... Hmm. Maybe not the most advantageous, but I do want to see... Alright, what does this do? It's going to bump up some pawn counts as well. I was wondering if it would inf influence the uh, enemy card that fell within my range of influence, but it seems like not. Seems like we're just claiming territory here. Uh, although this one, the ones that have these little red markers here, they might actually... Maybe they would actually do harm to opponent cards or something. I wonder. Uh, well, I don't have a three pawn. Well, I do have one three pawn card, but it's not going to do a whole lot of good, I feel, in its current position. Maybe. Hmm. I do not know what is most advantageous right now, but I will... I will see about this. I see. So this uh, one here, the uh, bottom middle one... I'm guessing this one did not go up in pawn count because uh, there was a, like, enemy kind of competing for that space in influence, maybe? I'm not certain. But, now let's... We've got the top pretty well locked in. I feel like we need to do a bit of work if we're going to take this stuff over, though. Yeah, I'm not getting that one. We lose. Tragic. Because, yeah, we can't place anything now, now that uh, all the... Yeah. We lose. Once the game is over, each player's score is tabulated. Only the player with the higher power in a lane has their power added to their score. In other words, no matter how high your power in a lane may be, if it's less than your opponent's power in the same lane, it will not count towards your score. After calculating the winner for each lane and adding their lane scores up, the player with the higher total score wins. Okay, so it's not just whoever has, like, two out of three lanes. It's whatever lanes you control, that adds to your score. So I still get pretty well stomped, but, uh... I get it now. That concludes the Queen's Blood tutorial.
You can add more cards to your collection by winning them off other players or purchasing booster packs from shops. In your quest to amass cards, you may even end up becoming the best player on the planet. <laughs> I don't expect that I will... Here, let's try playing one more round. I don't think I'm going to play a lot of cards. <laughs> At least not on camera, but we'll we'll see. Yeah, we don't need to do the tutorial again. I get the rules. We will try playing against some others. And uh, <laughs> if it seems like something that can be... easily done off camera between sessions, perhaps that is when I will continue my campaign to become best card player in the world. Yoo-hoo. Anyone home? No? If anyone minds me taking their stuff, now's your chance to complain. Not hearing a no. Let's go catch up with our group. I'm guessing... Anyone still here? Nope. Of course. This is only the most recent in a series of crises. Multiple reactor bombings, followed by the fall of the Sector 7 plate, culminating in this unprecedented destruction caused by a massive tornado... Where's that coming from? Sector 0, 1, and 2. After a briefing with Shinra investigators, Mayor Domino released a statement declaring the tornado to be, quote, Oh, here we go. Warfare, ...perpetrated by the infamous insurgent group known as Avalanche. The administration also suspects the involvement of Wutai and has begun investigations into the matter. Mm -hmm. Good morning, sir. I must apologize for not introducing myself to you earlier. I'm Broden, the owner of this inn. Your companions have all stepped out. Oh, but Barrett left a message he wanted me to pass along to you. You missed roll call, soldier boy. Luckily, you're on leave for the day. Don't waste it, though. Get your equipment checked ASAP. Sound advice. Adjust your party's gear by accessing materia and equipment from the main menu. Okay. Perhaps a trip to the arms dealer is in order? I'd love that. Good idea. By the way, Cloud... Do you have any folios on you? Yeah. In that case, you might also want to pay a visit to Magnata Books. They have stores all over, but the first official one was built here in Calm. And their resident scholars are remarkably talented. If you want to unlock the true potential of your folios, you should go see them. The first customization is always free. Cloud, you want to catch me up on this folios thing? Calm's a simple but beautiful town. Well, let's go see it, I guess. Finally. Rough day yesterday, huh? You've been waiting for me? I've been waiting for a chance to thank you properly. Without your help, I'd still be in Hojo's clutches, trapped in that lab. It was nothing. Even so, I owe you a debt, until it's paid. <laughs> I'm going to accompany you. Yes, please. Finally, we can play as Red. Oh, uh... If you're getting your equipment checked, have them check mine while you're at it. Sure thing. Hm, the Rook's got a backbone. Overcoming challenges, helping people in need, and exploring the world will deepen your party's bonds, thereby increasing your party level. The higher this level, the more skills and abilities will be available in your folios. There's that word again. Also, I love them introducing kind of like a social element <laughs> to our party. That is the best addition possible. Menu, you want to explain what the folios thing is? Maybe it says in the manual. Hmm. Nothing about folios. Nothing about folios. Lots of stuff, but not seeing a whole lot about folios. Folios and manuscripts. Here we go. Oh. Uh. 
that. It's a party level thing, I guess. Whatever, they'll explain more, I'm sure. Let's poke around this gorgeous place. Hello. Uh, morning. Morning. Everyone's kind of off doing their own thing. I noticed. Say, uh, this tank remind you of anything? Ooh. Uh, the promise I made? Yeah. The place I made that promise to you. You remember the dress I wore? It was one of my favorites. Uh, the light blue one? With a bit of green in there? Yeah. Oh, I was timed there. <laughs> Didn't have a lot of time to think. Cloud's actions affect his relationship with his allies, and the strength of these bonds can alter portions of the story. Really, now? Press L1 to view a comrade's feelings toward Cloud, as indicated by symbols such as those. Okay, like, pressing or holding L1 seems to, like, kind of bring up some other uh, objectives, at least, in the world. Card game objectives. Seems like Tifa's not feeling super enthused with us right now. I'll work on it. Am I intruding? Sorry, seems like there's a show going on. comes to us all the way from the great city of Midgar through a giant pipe that travels both above and below ground. The tank itself is modeled after Calm's old Republic-era water tower and is one of our town's most famous landmarks. I am here for more Calm world building. I want to go up the clock tower next. You can see Midgar from there. I gotta check to make sure sectors two and three are all right. Always looking out for your city, aren't you? One day I'll be telling everyone how you made it into Soldier. And I, I loved how in the original Seven, how all of the different towns outside Midgar had so much distinct visual character. But not all of them got a lot of opportunities to really establish themselves as places. Why is there a typewriter on this thing? Excited to get a better sense for what all these places are. Towering wall that I have built. The future of calm is bright indeed. No, no, that won't do it all. You're rehearsing? Crowds to the theater with hackney drivel like this. Morning. What do you want to do today once everyone gets here? Goodness. So much going on. What's down here? Uh. Seems like a good way to get our clothes all wet, Cloud. But I guess we can swim. So that's new. Huh. My boy and I had a big falling out. That seems like your business, sir. Aerith, also not thrilled with me right now. Uh -huh. Finally decided to get up. We have a lot of work to do, Cloud. Yeah. So what you been doing? Why, waiting for you, of course. You have? Got business with the bookstore? If so, I won't keep you. But if you're free afterwards, wanna climb the clock tower together? Uh, yeah. Sure. Let's. For real? Awesome. Since it was my idea, I'll go get the tickets. I'll meet you in front of the tower, okay? Absolutely, yes. And hey, you found the bookstore. Fancy bookstore. Hey there. Welcome to Magnata Books. Oh, I take it this is your first visit to one of our stores. Well, customization can seem tricky to the uninitiated. It takes time and experience to get it right. But I think you'll pick it up quick enough. Let's give it a try. 
Wow, there I just sort of realized their uh sort of generated uh lip sync animation for dialogue with small time NPCs, the stuff that's not been really given the uh high priority treatment, like all the main characters in the main story stuff. In remake, face animation and lip sync stuff was very rough. Looked quite bad for minor characters. And it's not like the face is doing amazing animation now, but at least the lip sync is not like noticeably <laughs> attention grabbingly weird. Nice to see that that was improved. That was really kind of the animation low point of the previous game. Anyway, spend skill points at Magnata Books locations and automats to augment your party's folios, thus unlocking powers latent in your allies. I want to know more about this. Okay, well, good. Unlocking skill cores in a character's folio increases their stats or teaches them new abilities, including synergy abilities. Please teach me of this. Select Cloud's Folio. Ooh. The orange skill cores can be unlocked by spending skill points. Move the cursor over a skill core to see what it does. For now, move to the skill core on the upper left. Firework Blade. Requires 5 SP. Cloud uses Aerith's magic to unleash a ranged attack. Effect Limit Level Increase. Neat. This displays the ability granted and the SP costs. Now to unlock the skill core. Huzzah! You've mastered a new synergy ability. As you unlock skill cores, adjacent cores become available in turn. You are free to choose which skill cores to unlock and when, adapting a character's strengths to suit your playstyle. Increasing the party level creates more skill cores. A character will earn SP when they level up or when they gather uh, acquire manuscripts such as The Art of Swordplay. Unlocked skill cores can be reset at any time, and the SP spent will be returned, so feel free to experiment with different combinations. I appreciate that, and thank you. And that's about all we can do for now. But we haven't even skimmed the surface, believe you me. There's much more to this than meets the eye. It may not seem like it yet, but you'll see. That is an entirely new system, and I am here for it. What'll it be? So, okay, so we do have to go to these stores to uh increase this though this isn't just a thing that's in our menu all the time it's good to know so these are other characters i assume or no this is all cloud wow here's barrett tifa Aerith, red we got some work to do <laughs> oh i'm excited have a good one What? <laughs> Technology sure has come a long way since our younger days. Damn. Who knew there was so much gill to be made in this wooden doll business? In this what? You make those? My wife picked one up recently. Said it's the cutest. Cute, huh? I'd say they look like the stuff of nightmares. So much for all those errands I have to run in Midgar. Goodness. There's so much chatter around the world. And now here's someone to lose at cards against. Wall, keeping us safe and secure. I could gaze at it all day. Um. Do you mind if I? Sorry for disrupting your box fort that you've built, ma'am. What's going on? Excuse me. That was my barricade you just destroyed. Oh, come to admire the Bailey. It is something. Or maybe. You're here to get your ass handed to you in a QB match. <laughs> I'm Zahira. A pleasure. Just like Calm's wall, I yield to no one, refusing to give a single inch to my opponents. Don't presume you'll emerge unscathed if you decide to go up against me. Because you will wind up with more than just a few bruises. I'm Cloud. Nice to meet you. Hmm. All right, so these are all the cards I have. I don't think I can... Haven't got the stuff required to build a custom deck yet, but that's fine. I'm still barely <laughs> understanding how to play well. Let's try.
Select the cards you wish to mulligan. If you don't like some or any of the cards you've drawn, you can put them back in the deck and draw new ones. As you cannot play high rank cards right away, it's often a good idea to return them to your deck in hopes of getting ones that'll help you early on. Makes sense. So yeah, I don't need that. Not really sure I need that one either. Yeah. Begin play. Well, I've got the Alpha Dunk back, but that's fine. Okay, let's start. Hmm. Interesting, the Queen Bee powers up something kind of on the opposite side. And the Grasslands Wolf. I'm getting kind of a better sense now for, like, what the different patterns allow. Like, ones that uh, have a yellow box off to the right will allow you to advance further up the board. But you do still also want to be, like, powering up adjacent rows as much as you can. Moving forward a bit out the gate would probably be smart. Let's uh, start with that. Let's see if we can do slightly better at cards. Okay. I could drop one of these. Well, no, we can't. Not in a way that it really benefit us that much yet. I can also... I can't drop that yet. What if... Hmm. It's not the best strat so far, but let's get ourselves moving forward a little bit, I suppose. Keep your card off my side of the board. It's my side. Get your own. Hmm. It's interesting. It's definitely going to take some time and practice to learn how to play effectively. Here, I'll give up strength on this row to start advancing in the top one a bit more. Yeah, yeah, you can have that one. It's fine. At least I sure hope so. I'm going to plant this one. Right up here. And then try placing this here. Hmm. If I place this here, it'll... Yeah. Flip those around. Nice. Okay. Okay. Then I can drop... I want to see what happens if we place... Is the red spot powering up my existing cards, or is it one that... Like takes over somebody else's cards. I'm guessing it powers up. That's what it seemed to do with the previous one of these Moo that I placed. It powered up the B underneath it. I think that's okay. I think that's what we're looking at here. So this will give me a whole lot more strength on whatever row I drop it on, which is probably smart. And I've got control of all the terrain now, so I don't think they can really do anything. It's a good spot to be in. Didn't realize, like, how crucial that aspect of the game would end up being. But uh, I definitely win now, so that's nice. Like, sure, we can drop this one here. And then drop... 
We don't really need to at this point, but we can drop this here, which also powers that. Yeah, all right, all right, I'm getting it more. It's a pretty good card game. Definitely something for me to do a lot more of. Off camera, though. <laughs> Yay, we got a new card, which seems pretty good. Impossible. How could someone break through my perfect defense? Who are you? It was made of cardboard, ma'am. Deep down, I always knew. I knew I couldn't stay holed up in here forever. Walls can keep people safe. But even the sturdiest ones eventually crumble. Right. Starting today, you will be my new wall, as it were. And I am going to enjoy watching you crumble. I'm going to go. Every part of this conversation experience has been awkward. You know, and for once, I don't feel like I, Cloud, am to blame. Is this what it feels like for everyone else to be around me all the time? No wonder all of my party members are extremely unimpressed with me socially. Cloud, we need to work on ourselves. The sound rules. Look how pretty it is. Have a drink or take it to go. Try a pint of Cobb's Real theme park energy and how just like full of like a visual flavor and spectacle this place is. It's not, like, huge in size. Like, it's pretty big, but it's not enormous. It just... <laughs> just feels huge because of how dense and full of uh, impressive visual stuff it is. Yeah, sorry. Can I buy things? I can. Huzzah. So, you have items that I don't desperately need right now. Especially given I'd love to... Oof. More cards would be nice. I am not throwing away all my money on that right now. We're pretty good on Materia. I would like to have Steel also. I'm gonna grab Steel. Thanks. Hope to see you again soon. Feels like that could eventually pay for itself. It's possible I will show card game matches, but we'll just, like, zip through the actual game itself, just since some of the characters do actually have fun or silly dialogue, and I'm sure there are some <laughs> people you can play against who are actual more noteworthy characters. I don't know. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. It's a big game. Where's everybody else? I found Aerith... I found Tifa. Oh, shop. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Damn. That is quite the weapon you got there, mister. Seen plenty of action by the look of it. But saying that, it's still only a shadow of what it could be. With a little love, that baby will sing. If you like, I could show you. Yes, please. Adjust your weapon skills via upgrade weapons in the main menu. Raising your character's weapon levels will unlock more of these skills, as well as stat boosts, allowing you to customize your party to suit your playstyle. Changing a character's weapon will not reset this level. Great to know. By accessing the latent power in your gear, you can set up uh, can set weapon skills to further enhance your abilities and attributes. Try augmenting the Buster Sword. From the upgrade weapon screen, you can enhance a weapon to see its stats. Here you can see the party's current equipment, their weapon levels, and the amount of skill points needed to reach the next level. Select Cloud's Buster Sword. A large broadsword that has inherited the hopes of those who fight. A weapon's attributes and acquired skills are displayed here. Now try equipping a weapon skill. The nodes in which you can equip skills are displayed here. Okay, this is pretty new. Here you will find a list of available skills. Select weapon ability damage plus 5% to equip it. 
As you increase your weapons level, you'll learn more skills and unlock more nodes in which to set them. In addition to the upgrade weapon screen, you can also tweak your skill loadout by going to the material and equipment screen, selecting a character and pressing set materia. If you'd prefer a more streamlined experience, you can opt to automatically allocate weapon skills. That's nice. There are a lot of systems and mechanics in here. <laughs> this can be done from the auto upgrade settings menu. You can choose how to auto optimize your weapon skills using the three available options, prioritize attack, defense, or strike a balance. As you accrue more weapon skills and nodes, the game will continue to automatically adjust your loadout based on your upgrade settings. For now, the setting will be left on manual. Cool. See? What I tell you? That girl is singing, and she's got the voice of an angel. Just make sure you take proper care of her, all right? Oh, and while you're here, check out what we got to offer. Yes, please. New weapons can be found in treasure chests during your travels, but should you happen to miss one, the local arms dealer will have it available to purchase. I love that and appreciate it. Many of these merchants even stock the latest armor and accessories, so be sure to check in often. What you got? Ah, uh, that's a little expensive. For me, right now. Pretty good armor, though. Probably better than what we have. I may be back for these later. Once I've figured out how to get some money. You take care of that weapon now. Each weapon comes with a distinct ability, which can be used uh, when the weapon is equipped. Using this ability repeatedly or meeting its proficiency bonus conditions will increase your proficiency. Max out this proficiency to use said ability even when you don't have the corresponding weapon equipped. Okay, so that this is at least the same system they had uh, in Remake. And I like it. I like it a lot. It gives you a reason to use every weapon you find. Check an ability's proficiency bonus via material and equipment. I'm getting the feeling this game is going to be huge, given we are in episode four and I'm still first encountering what feel like they're going to be very basic progression mechanics. I do not have a problem with being in this game for a good while. I'm enjoying it a lot so far. Cloud! Over here! Ooh. Let's get started then, shall we? <sighs> yeah. Really impressed with Calm so far. It's such a tiny little road stop <laughs> in the original. It's got some shops, it's got the hotel that Cloud tells a story in, and other than that, Nothing else there. It's mentioned in the story from time to time. But beyond that, there's no reason for you to go back there ever. Really doesn't have much chance to make an impression. And especially after the full game treatment Midgar got, I really was hoping that they would try to bring a lot more out of towns like these so that it didn't feel like <laughs> Midgar was the one actual city in this world and the rest were little pit stops. This feels... This feels pretty great. I think Midgar's this away. Should be, yeah. That's much more what I remember Midgar looking like when we left yesterday. Funny, isn't it? How small it looks. It is far away. So, did something happen between you and Tifa? Don't look so shocked. We're roommates, you know. She say something? Not about you two, no. Still, I can tell. I would have given anything to have a friend when I was growing up. Don't take her for granted. Uh oh. Hey, don't make a mess in the nice town. 
This won't do it all. BT, you know the drill. Defy these terrorists. <laughs> 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 for us aren't they gotta be yeah i guess it makes sense they probably would pursue us huh we did leave an impression oh good idea Yeah, this is preferable to making a mess. Not here. Well, we know we'll take the back down. Hey, you seen anyone acting suspicious? <laughs> no one carrying a big sword this way. I heard about the reactor bombings in Midgar. That was you, wasn't it? It's okay, I'm on your side. Got a contact at HQ. You were with Avalanche? Not exactly. Stop. I'll keep the troopers occupied. While we're talking, you two go up and over. Okay. Here we go. Going on? We're searching for some fugitives. Have you seen anyone suspicious? Now that you mention I think I might have. Though perhaps it was just my imagination. What was it? Oh, for the love of get out of here! Wait, wait. I know I saw some people who had a fugitive air about them. If only I could remember their faces. I know I someone else. Stop wasting our time. Thanks for covering. Aerith? Coming, right? Good. I like this added element as well. It gives us some urgency to get moving and not just linger. They turn up yet? No, but we're still searching buildings. We'll search harder. We gotta find them. It's like, why on earth would Shinra just stop looking for us as soon as we leave the city borders? What other town nearby would we go to? Good addition. That went well. The inn's not much further. But stay on your toes. Thanks for the help. Where are they? Down below, waiting for you. The tunnel in the basement will take you outside of town. Leave now and they won't catch you. Head to the east. A friend of mine runs a farm out there. He'd be happy to help you. Also, take this. 
It's a transmuter. Converts raw materials into more practical items. A Republic antique, but it still works. You'll get more use out of it than me. Neat. Why are you doing this? Could have just turned us in. <laughs> yeah, I could have. But this town and I have a history with Shinra. Who knows? Maybe this will turn out to be the worst decision I've ever made. So before I change my mind, you better get going. <sighs> From the item transmuter screen in the main menu, you can convert raw materials into practical items such as consumables, equipment, accessories, and such. To expand your transmutation options, collect transmuter chips found throughout the world, or improve your craftsmanship. Alright. Neat. Hey, why not? Tutorial. You can now transmute items and armor. Using the materials from Broden, try creating a potion. First open the item transmuter menu. The currently transmutable items are listed here. Increasing your craftsmanship and acquiring transmuter chips will expand the range of items you can create. These are the materials and necessary amounts for the selected item. Here you can see the requirements for transmuting a potion. Transmuting an item for the first time grants experience, which increases your craftsmanship. Be sure to create new items whenever you get the chance. Transmute a potion by selecting it from the list and holding X. Okay. Boom. Through transmutation, you can keep your supplies topped off without needing to buy items from vendors, which boy do I appreciate that a whole bunch. That's a good addition for a game that's going to be in a big open, or more open at least, world. Convenient. Materials can be found out in the field, or in chests, and gained through combat. There's also items that can only be obtained via transmutation. Sweet. Well, off we go. Hi team. You guys missed the clock tower. Oh, you made it. All in one piece? Sorry we're late. For the love of where the hell have you two been? On a date, kind of. What? Uh Well that was the last one. At least till things calm down. Eesh. Sure, Dad. Got that? Uh, oh. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> now, let's move. I love this bunch, and this is gonna be... Alright, guys, wait up. I'm gonna... Episode's got... Okay. That's gonna be the best part of this game, I feel. Uh, a thing that this game can do that the previous one really couldn't, uh, just because that's not... I don't think it was really possible back then, and it wasn't how the games were designed. They can get in all sorts of moments between these characters in the party as we go, just building up their relationship. You really don't get a sense for that in early Final Fantasies at all. Even if they have good stories and good characters, and you do kind of get some sense of camaraderie between some of them, especially the ones you get earliest on, who have the longest time to make an impression, they don't have all of these little moments and scenes of hanging out in towns, having little conversations as you go, getting closer as friends, uh, and certainly not between all of the different characters. This, I feel like, is such a huge opportunity, and I love seeing them, like, really going for it to try to take advantage of it. I am super excited to see these characters, like, spend more time together and uh, bounce off of each other. It's going to be a good group with a good dynamic. Can't wait. Anyway, I will see you all tomorrow for some more of this. I can't wait. It's going to be a great time. Take care until then. Goodbye! Goodbye!